Hey, what is going on YouTube? Sense of Wrath here. How are you guys doing today? I got uh, my first commentation in a while to put out to you guys. And first off, I want to say yes. This is a relatively long video. I have a lot of things to say and I hope you guys will enjoy the gameplay with it. I got some mod uh, some, uh, duh, Modern Warfare 3, but this is some domination gameplay with the MOC Nation. And it's the only gameplay that I actually had saved right now, so it it's perfect. Because I'm talking about, I'm going to be talking about a, re a reply video basically to... Felix Black, MOC Nation, MOC Tactics, the man with the golden guns, the man with more nicknames than John F. Kennedy. Um, so that's what I'm going to be talking about. And I need time, and this this video actually had time. Plus, I was playing it with the nation, and we were doing some dominating on domination. So I hope you guys enjoyed. And yes, I am using a baby monitor. This is generally what happens when uh, you get bored with the game. You start doing stupid shit. For example, putting a baby monitor on an ACR. The only time ever prior to this that I actually used the baby monitor was when I was using the CM901. Uh, this is probably like the first month the game came out, I decided to put a baby monitor on the CM901 just to see how it would work out. Uh, no, usually don't use them. But anyways, so let's go ahead and talk about what Felix was talking about. And he brought out Robert Bowling leaving Activision. You know, he decided to finally go ahead and leave and how it's going to impact us. And predominantly he was talking about how the community was being fickle about Robert Bowling being gone calling him out, calling him a piece of shit, and all this other stuff. Now, we don't know exactly why he left. I did try to do some research online and try to find some reason, reasoning and rhyme behind, you know, behind him leaving, and I really couldn't find anything. Now, there's a couple of things that got pointed out. The community itself has been riding him so hard. You know, there, there were threats going out to him, him and his family, um, you know, calling him out for being a piece of shit, you know, the game sucks, this and that or the other. So that could have been definitely a reason. Another thing that was talked about he had an interview with the Machinima Network, and one of the developers there, and they said that one of the things he ended up talking about is how some of the, co the download content should have been for free. What they ended up taking from that interview was that he was displeased with uh, the corporate culture of Activision and the way they were doing things, trying to make money for every single thing that was out there. They weren't catering so much for the community as for themselves and making money. You can take that either way you want to because, needless to say, Robert himself was making millions. You know, Activision made billions, hidden record sales for Modern Warfare 3, hidden record pre-orders for Modern Warfare 3. All that stuff was in play. So, could he have been unhappy? No, not too much. Was it a bad career move to leave the COD franchise? Maybe so. We don't know. We don't have all the details. But those are, those are really a couple of things that got put out there of maybe why he possibly left. We, we are, like I said, we are not sure. But Felix was talking about predominantly how, you know, uh, he was getting those threats and, and people were just being fickle about, you know, him leaving. And I can definitely agree with that. People shouldn't be doing that. It was his job. It was his career. He was making mad money from it. Who knows, you know? Who really knows? So I can definitely agree with Felix's video on that. But I want a couple of points I want to hit real quick while I'm talking about this and Robert himself. Uh, let's talk about let's go let's, let's go ahead and rewind it quite a bit to prior to the release of Modern Warfare 3. The man sold Modern Warfare 3. That's he's a good reason why there were so many sales for the game itself. There were he not 100%, but there's a part of me buying the hardened edition with COD Elite is Robert Bowling. I watched E3. I I you know I saw how he sold it. Talking about the customization. Talking about COD Elite. You know. Talking about all this stuff, you know, what's going to be free for COD Elite and all this happy shit. He was, in part, I was a, uh, he was a reason why I bought COD, COD Elite. Now, you, you, move, you move forward a little bit and talk about COD XP. One of the things the community has talked about every release of COD, why don't you ever do betas, okay? Maybe looking at Battlefield or DICE's Battlefield 3 beta, maybe the reason why COD has never done a beta, an open beta like that. Because, honestly, I played the beta for Battlefield 3, and I think that might have been a reason why I didn't buy the game itself. Because I spent one hour playing the game and about six hours trying to get into the game, okay? It was horrible. So I'm sure that kind of lack, that kind of pulled back some of the sales from Battlefield 3, even though they were still good. They, were probably, they could have probably been a little bit more successful if that beta would have been actually good. Now, what did Activision do, though? They were, okay, community wants beta. What, how can we make money off of that? You know that if you put out an open beta... You know, and DICE was paying for it. COD would have paid for it too. You, you're looking at spending money to put the, the game as an open beta into the market. You know, onto Xbox Live, PlayStation Network, or the Wii Network, whatever the case may be. You have to pay for that. 
They didn't want to. They wanted to make money, not spend money. It's a it's a business. It's kind of understandable. But what do they do? They came up with COD XP. Some people were invited for free. Others were, you know, had to pay for the entrance to COD XP. A lot of people waited for hours in line just to, you know, do that that that, that line thing, majigger down the hill or whatever the case may be. Tons of people spent fifteen dollars for a burger at Burger Town. It is a once in a lifetime experience. And I can tell you right now, even though they probably spent a couple hundred thousand dollars setting everything up, maybe even a million, they made millions of dollars, or you know, whatever the case may be, off of COD XP. You know, you can my 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 boy, a Korean killer. He went there. He had a good time. It was a once in a lifetime experience for him. He enjoyed it. And if I had the opportunity to go to it, I would have done the same. But that's the way that is. It was all about the money. And how does that relate to the open beta? Well, it basically did a beta. They put hundreds of people into a hangar and they put it on one single server or maybe two and they let the pe these people go to town. And it was successful. People loved it. Because reality is, if, if I would break this game down, if it wasn't for the lack of compensation in this game, I would love this game. You know, the guns that might piss me off sometimes. The Type 95, the, the overpowered MP7 that can, you know, kill me from across the map with silence on it when I'm trying to shoot at them with an ACR. You know, but that's where lack compensation falls into place as well. When I come around the corner, I'm already dead. Uh, I get six hit markers on a person and he's me with one bullet, I'm dead. I have to go look into my theater and look at the video and see something completely different. And by the way, with that being said, other than tagging Felix Black's vlog into this video as well towards the end with the annotation also on the bottom, there's another video from a guy named Capo that I'm subscribed to. He does a great breakdown on lag compensation. So check that out. I want to go ahead and tag his video as well into this video on the bottom and in the annotation as well. So check that out. You guys might be surprised at what you see there. And he actually does a really good explanation, video breakdown, he's separate screens. So anyways, I'm getting completely off track here. So he did COD, COD Elite, COD XP. It was a great success. But like I said, the one thing about them being in that hangar, 100 people in that hangar, you couldn't tell lack compensation. Did they know about that? Was that on purpose? You know, still success, but lack compensation wasn't there because it's all on one server in the same room. It's not like a million people across the globe playing the game, you know? It's completely different. Then you had to cut, you had your cut, you know, your cut elite came out and there was all these problems with it, you know. Overall, really, if you think about Robert Bowling, he did his job. He really did. He's He was with Activision, not necessarily with Activision, but with Infinity Ward, at least for three years for the COD community, he was out there doing his thing. He didn't really become prevalent until Modern Warfare 3. Now let's let's look at it like this. These are all good things that I've talked about Robert Bowling so far, you know. He, he tried to use some input. He tried to make things better for us, you know, with the developers. They obviously can't fix live compensation. It's so embedded into the system that they cannot fix it. Let's just pray that they don't come out with it on Black Ops 2. Um, but the one thing about him is he took that job. And COD up to this point, up to Modern Warfare 3, has always been a success. There may have been some issues in Modern Warfare 2 that ended up getting fixed. There may have been some issues in Black Ops that got fixed. One thing couldn't get fixed, lack compensation, and he ended up taking the heat for it. Now, what would have happened if Modern Warfare 3 was a giant success? He would have been hailed a hero, right? Because, poster child, right? The developers don't get their names really out there, but he does. Modern Warfare 3 was not a success. It was sort of a flop. And he got burned for it, okay? In a sense, I have to say, it's kind of his fault, too, you know? He took, the, he took on a challenge as his job, but yet it didn't work out for him. So now he's leaving. Fine, that's his decision. But I can't completely find him not at fault at all because of that by itself. Well, that's all I got to put out there, guys. And I will talk to you all later. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe. This is the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed the commentary. And I will talk to you all later. Peace out and have a wonderful day.